Hello, and welcome, or welcome back to Poor Man's Electronics Bench. I had the curiosity of looking at some YouTube videos on clamp-on ammeters that have a function that have a resolution down into the milliamp range, and I was interested in knowing if it might be something useful for troubleshooting some equipment, like a capacitor shorting out inside of a device instead of trying to interrupt the connections on the capacitors and measure the resistance or leakage on it to just clamp on the thing and see if there's any current flowing through it. Items like that. And I ran into a pretty low priced buy on Amazon for this particular item. It is a B-side mini AC and DC clamp meter model ACM91. And it has a range of functions rated on it. A power supply, two AAA batteries, function, voltage, current, resistance, capacitance, frequency, temperature, continuity, live wire check. <clears throat> and I will disclose that I am guilty of opening this guy up and putting batteries in it, but I will go over what it comes with and also the installation of the batteries and what you might find when you start playing around with this thing as far as checking it. So, we have a set of instructions that are translated to, to an extent. We have things like technique data. <laughs> They're trying, you know, I mean, there's all the call I can give them. It's, it's, uh, you're probably going to find some other, some other curiously humorous errors in here but I'm not going to look too close it's it's a digital voltmeter most of us have played with them over the years most of them have also read things that have some <laughs> strange instructions with them it does come with a little thermal probe which is nice and it also comes with a screwdriver for changing your batteries so we'll go, we'll go over the functionality of those, those in a bit <coughs> excuse me I got a little little lingering kind of allergy cough like thing so test leads test leads are test leads they're not can't say they're the heaviest wire gauge but they are they do seem like they're, they're going to be functional to a good point they come come with blanking caps on them and I am kind of fond of these leads in particular they have the removable boots on them main reason being is because I am a klutz on poking around in live equipment and I've been known to Go over on a pin on a transistor or on a IC module and manage to short things out a little bit or cross connections on things I shouldn't. So I'm probably not going to investigate much with these guys though. It's I'm sure they're I'm sure they're functional. They're test leads. They come with a meter. Considering the the value of it, if you want on Amazon, I this was a pretty low valued product. And then there's the the actual unit itself. I'll turn right side up for viewing pleasure. But it might have had a cover on it at once now. <clears throat> and it had a some sort of little belt clip or something on the back there. I think I decided to take that off and got that lost. Maybe I'll maybe I'll look for that again. It it seemed like something that would just be a possibility of shorting out a piece of equipment if you placed it inside of inside of equipment. So I decided to go the whole Insulated route, and here I put some low budget AAA batteries to go in the low budget meter. It has a lengthy serial number on it. Serial number production is also probably date coded too 2022 0800. Sure, some sort of date code in that mess. So, no rubber seal on the battery, so it's wouldn't, uh, wouldn't depend on keeping moisture out. To a large extent, but then again, it can let the it can let the alkali vapors from the caustic material in the battery seep seep out as well. <clears throat> I'll go over a couple of things with this. The first thing I noticed right away is, for what it's worth, it has passed quality control number three. I don't know if there was two other quality controls that was supposed to pass what that number three denotes, but 
it passed quality control number three. Functions on it in general, it has like a live wire, no contact alarm thing. Uh, let's see if I've got something that's plugged into AC that I can bring up here. I think maybe I gotta press the voltage alert button. This was going to a soldering error. Let me see what the, I am plugged in. Hmm, okay, here we go. It's on now. Doesn't really pick up current. I'm sure it, it was working though when I checked it. It did uh if he held it up to a live uh Live 120 voltage source. It did give an indication with a beeping. It did have a. It's got a backlight to it. The backlight isn't the. You hold it, hold it, and it's got a little bit of a backlight. It's not the greatest, but if you were in a pitch black condition, it's better than nothing. The one thing I, for functions outside of the current range, is it's advertises having a. A low impedance AC DC volt function the AC part of that is nice for elect people that do like household wiring and stuff like that because you will find times where you have induced AC voltage onto a disconnected lead or it might be something that's that's just that closed down on a neutral or something that's hanging there and it's there's enough current flowing through the adjacent AC wiring where it induces a voltage in that lead and a meter that's got a really high impedance to it that's measuring AC voltages like a 10 mega ohm meter will detect that as a stray voltage but if you can bridge something across the leads with a little lower impedance it'll drain off that voltage and give you a better indication of the actual voltage potential of that wire now if you notice I am in the low Z function I'll get this guy a little closer and if you see a default so they first turned it to that to the, the DC now DC is kind of you really not see a induced DC voltage too much because that's not how induction works you have to have an AC potential so in this case you're looking to select over to AC, we'll press the select button and nothing happens. <laughs> if I press the V alert, it does, it goes to no contact, but then it keeps on coming back to DC and there is no combination of button pushing on this thing oh wait I think I finally got it okay low C low Z AC volts so I take that back it does work it's just that I have to figure out the exact combination of buttons to push to get that to happen so I was having a problem getting that done before so that function is in here <clears throat> I'm not uh, according to the instructions the impedance is still one mega ohm but I don't know how it changes that determination to be a low z termination within the meter i'll have to investigate that more but that's not what i bought it for i bought it the main thing we bought it for is for the <clears throat> the low milliamp range clamp on function and the only other thing i'm curious to play with is the temperature probe because temperature probes are just fun in general and this one's unique in the point where it doesn't a lot of temperature probes have a certain type of termination on them or you need an adapter to go into the meter this one just has the bananas on it so we can go right in with what we have which is wonderful and I think this is even the standard distance for most meter terminations as well so you could use a different probe in here if wanted keep on going out of focus a little bit here and I'm going to change to temperature And it says I am at 12.913 ohms. Oh no, that's ohms. I'm sorry. Here's temperature. Degree C. 
this is interesting to the point where it comes up with both Fahrenheit and Celsius on the same scale. Let me turn the backlight on. Maybe you can see that a little better. Or not. Probably get rid of this light. There we go. But it's detecting and reading my body heat off my fingers for fairly well so this is a usable feature you can't can't discard it it's uh if you didn't have something like this and bought this meter you you, you now have it and it's like i said it's not for a great price and next i'm going to cover some of the peculiarities with the metering for its sensitivity to magnetic fields and then to the practical use of the milliamp range in the clamp on readings and i'm real i'm not going to get into all the ac and dc volt readings it's probably just about as accurate as any other sub 50 dollar meter that you're going to buy anywhere online and it's it's a it's a you know it's got its practical application but the I'm sure most people are just going to be interested, like me, in that low milliamp range for the clamp-on function. So we're going to cover cover that in the next part of this. And now for entertainment's sake, I'm going to see how sensitive this meter is to even the Earth's magnetic field. I'm outside away from any, any magnetic objects, and I'm not to get this thing straight here. You can see I've got a software running on my phone. It's an Android uh, app called Polaris GPS. It's got a little uh, little rose-oriented magnet compass in there. And I just zeroed this meter, and it's already doing strange things. Let me try and zero it again. Hard, hard to do with uh, one hand holding this cutting board up. Okay, I just zeroed it pointing north. It's kind of behaving itself, and I'm going to going to rotate going slowly to the east. It was east. I'm going to go to the south and pause for a minute. This is west, even though the compass says it's lagging a little bit, it's and then it'll decline going back to north or it's still holding still holding a little bit of a residual reading and that's how sensitive the sensor is for the current in here on DC. It's it's ridiculously sensitive. <laughs> I mean, it can't. It can't even. It doesn't even zero itself when it goes back to true magnetic north. And I really doubt if that has anything to do with the point that there might be some residual magnetism on the on the uh, the clamp itself. I've seen people try to de uh, use a demagnetizer on them repeatedly, and it still ends up coming up with the same thing, even on a low current application. So we're gonna we're gonna go inside and cover. How sensitive and accurate this might be if put in a position where it's not moved around much to monitor current. And I am back. I am set up in a controlled indoor environment and I'm going to compare the readings on the B side current clamp meter, which I have a 500 ohm, 100 watt resistor going through the clamp on it and I have in series with a Fluke 87 set to the milliamp range so it is indicating down to 1 100th of a milliamp for current and what I'm going to do first and then that is also powered by my HP E3612 power supply so I can control and vary the power supply well the well, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to delta out my delta relative out my zero on both meters. Okay. 
I'm going to try to disturb the leads and the meters as little as possible while doing this. So right now the B side's behaving its, itself, but it has a tendency to drift. So I'm going to start running some current through the circuit, and we'll see how things measure out. Bring it up to 10 milliamps, and right now it's indicating a solid 10 milliamps on the B side without any drift. I'm up to 34, but as you notice the B side's starting to lag a little bit. I've got a 23 milliamp. My output on my HP is also indicating 34, so I'm trusting those two devices over anything else. And then going up to 50, I am at fairly close, 46, 48 with the B side. At this point I'm going to go back down and I'm going to shut the power off in the H. Oh, okay, the B side's now entering indicating 51, 52, drifting the other direction. I'm going to shut the power off on the B side. It'll have a slow discharge because there's capacitors involved in the, in the power supply. So if you notice we still have a residual we have a residual now of a 13 milliamps on the B side. Power it back up again. And it is starting to drift high. It is high 11 milliamps now, so I'm going to go up to 100. It's really all that's really needed for the practical part of this demonstration. Now it looks like uh, got to change ranges on the go up to a manual here. Oh, I've got to go to the 10 amp position, I think, now. Yes. Okay, that is indicating 66. It's the uh, HP meter is also showing 65, so. Meter on the HP. Got a piece of foam rubber I've got to have to keep some glare out of the way. But if you notice, that B side is starting to terribly drift off of calibration. All I'm going to do, do again is turn my power off on the HP. My current on my fluke goes down to a zero, but if you see the B side, it's accumulated, accumulated a residual reading of 32. I'm going to power it back up. So at the 32 and the 66 is coming up, not too far from the 90s, but that residual is still changing. And this is without moving that B side meter at all. It's just there's some sort of some sort of sensitivity in this that needs some sort of compensation in order to not drift off of a zero as badly as it does. So although this is capable of, I'm going to go down to shutting the HP off again, and I'm going to re delta. the B side as well as I can on DC. I'm going to delta, delta the 87 as well. I think what I'm going to do is power cycle it as well. Wants to jump to that DC. There we go. Just drift central. I'll well, throwing you right off right off of a cold start. It gave a good reading for a second, and then it started started with this drifty thing. So as far as for usable measurement, maybe that's. The only way you're going to get one out of here is to delta it and then energize your circuit and take and pay attention as quick as you can to the let's go to zero 
one negative there again. Power it on. It's two milliamps off. Two one milliamps off because it's drifting right at 65, 66. So it's it's in agreement, but now it's drifting low. So <laughs> you don't know which way this is going to drift as you're using it. So and it maybe that's the only way you're going to get an accurate current reading is to take it very quickly when you first energize the circuit. It's not going to be useful for long-term monitoring of anything. <clears throat> Depower it again. My zero drifted to a negative seven. Takes a couple of seconds, but it seems to finally come up with a cum cumulative number close to the actual current flow, and then it starts to drift off. So within that first three or four seconds, you can get a fairly accurate reading, and then after that, you, you just can't really trust it anymore. Going over some of the things in this catalog, or instruction manual specifications, it does have some functions that might be useful if you don't have them on, a, on another meter and we're looking for a low value something. It will cover direct connection DC microamp current down to 0 0.1 microamp. I haven't checked the accuracy on that, but also it will cover frequency out to 1000 Hertz. <clears throat> now, so here's where the that low Z function on the impedance we have on the regular AC voltage, it says input impedance of 10 ohms. Maximum input voltage is 600 volts. On low voltage, DC voltage says 600, new for 0 0.1. Maximum input, or low impedance, DC volts, AC volts, 600, 0 0.1. The impedance on both of them are 10 mega ohms, so I don't know how it gets rid of that by low impedance, but there must be some other functionality within the meter that figures that out. I'm not going to tear the meter apart to figure that out. It's not worth it. Another a few other things here is the uh, our resistance range it measures out to 60 mega ohms. Capacitance it measures the rate the 600 microfarad range measures down to 0 0.1 micro. So that's what like 100 nano. And the buzzer for continuity it's got a, the display with it that has a resolution down to 0 0.1 ohms, but it also says if the resistance is 30 ohms, less than 30 ohms, the continuity beeper sounds. So that's a useful function for doing some troubleshooting. So, <clears throat> Other than that, it's, like I said, it's, it's got a meter. It's translated fairly well into English, so... We'll go from there. So that's what I found on this meter in a nutshell. I figure it gives some information for somebody interested in wanting to buy a low price meter like this. I haven't figured out what this does here. Oh, okay, it's probably to clip a probe on to, to check Check a voltage like that. So that, that's kind of handy because it keeps your keeps your hand away from stuff while keeping the meter still in your hand. So, so a little little extra functionality bonus in there. So interesting little toy, not too expensive. I'm sure it'll serve some functionality if you've got a traveling box for tools of electronics that you take with you on a, automotive trips or something like that. And just use it, need it for troubleshooting in a car or doing some regular maintenance work. It will probably, probably serve just as well as any other low price meter you can get. It's not very large at all. It's only, as far as size is, my, my hand span is 8 inches and it's just below that. So I want to put that about maybe 7 or just over 7 inches in size. So it's fairly compact and powered by regular, easy to obtain triple-a batteries well you can probably get your money's worth out of it if you don't if the batteries don't leak in it and damage the thing and kill it in general so <laughs> that's it for this review and if you're interested 
in more content like this, please feel free to subscribe. And if you like this content, please feel free to hit a like as well. And we shall see you on the next video. This content is available on YouTube and Odyssey.com. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe. Hope you return soon.